Hi, thanks for joining me. So today we're going to um, basically make a table file and dump a script kind of rudimentarily for a game on the Game Gear. This is going to be Mado Monogatari 3. Now I already started making this video. Um, I, hadn't, I hadn't actually looked at this game at all before this. This is completely a fresh game, but uh, I had some technical difficulties, so I've made it part way through this. Um, but we're gonna just sort of review what I did. And to start off here, we're gonna just open the game up into an emulator. Uh, if you have, you know, an emulator with some debugging features for a particular system, it can be really helpful for this kind of thing. So let's go ahead and pause uh, the emulation here. This is a first bit of text that comes up in the game, and there's no guarantee that the game you know, encodes the text the same way for all of its the text that's used in the game. Uh, but uh, you just you want to start with something you know, the, the usually the first bit of text in the game. At least figure out that text encoding scheme. And if there are other ones in the game, then you're kind of just going to have to figure those out individually. But um, but yeah, so. What we're looking at here is uh, the tiles view, something you can get to from the debugger here, view tiles. There are some other things here, but, um, you know, and I don't know specifically, uh, I'm not super sophisticated at this, honestly, like people that know more about the way that the processor works and the way that the assembly code is run on the processor for the Game Gear could approach this a little bit differently, like finding the pointers that point to the script and actually dumping it that way, which would be a bit more, um, you know, uh, elegant. But uh, what we're looking at here, I assume, is the video memory, something along those lines here, where we have uh, a lot of graphics tiles loaded here. You can see how, obviously, it's clear how this builds this image. And it looks like there's uh, there's actually other graphics loaded in here that aren't even showing on the screen. They may be showing up soon, or they might not even show up until later in the game. It's, you know, it's just pulling a, a chunk of uh, data off of the ROM. Now, um, sometimes what happens is the game will load its whole font into memory here, and you'd be able to see it all up here. This game does a little differently. It loads all the numbers, it looks like, in a couple of handful of characters here. I think these are probably always loaded into memory. But then it sort of like loads individually the lines that uh, that come up. So, uh, so one technique if it did load this whole font into memory here is we, we could kind of see each of these tiles basically has a, a hex representation here. This is like 0, 0, 0, 1 sorry, 002, 003, so that could help us to build a table file. And it, all a table file is is a list of equivalencies um, for what the text encoding is. All that means is like what what bytes basically represent the, the characters that are actually showing up on the screen. Uh, and that's what we want to figure out, because I just want to translate this game. That's basically the reason I'm approaching this this way and doing this is I just want to dump a script so I can translate it. I'm not going to be um, hacking the game or anything like that. I'm going to want somebody that you know knows a little bit more about it to do that. But um, so the first thing we want to do in this case, because the whole font isn't being loaded into memory here, is to start by doing what's called a relative search. So relative searching is going to um, basically just be a way of searching for a string of characters based on their relationships to each other. So, you know, because we don't know what the actual um, the bytes are that represent these characters, but if if they're all in order by an alphabet, then they're going to have the same relationship to each other. So the reason I'm actually focusing right here in particular <laughs> is uh, when you're picking um, text to relative search for, you want to avoid some things. So for starters, um, th this is text in the katakana uh, alphabet. Now that, that might be okay if there's a whole bunch of katakana text all together, but usually it's easier to find a good chunk of hiragana text together. Uh, we're going to want to avoid things with diacritical marks here, which change the voicing of the character. Here this is the character Ho, but it's pronounced Bo here for Boku. And um, this diacritical mark could be represented by a, um, a byte that comes after the unvoiced you know, the byte that represents the unvoiced character. It could uh, come before the byte that represents the unvoiced character. So, and that makes it a little hard to search because we don't know exactly how it's storing these diacritical marks. In certain kinds of text, the diacritical mark could be stored on a completely different um, 
like line of text so I mean it's it visually is represented by a different line but it probably uh, in terms of the order of the bytes is represented either before or after the byte for that character so you know basically all of this area we can pretty much avoid but once we get here we've got u shi no ta ma and that's actually a good string of characters that are fairly close together to each other in the alphabet that I think will make really good candidates to search for so let's do that um, now I'm opening up my Japanese text editor here um, I can go ahead and put in u shi no to ma ta ma ta ma um, that's not a word, it's just a string of characters uh, from a couple different words that are close to each other. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we, we can open this up into a hex editor that I use, WinHex. And I actually kind of forget. Uh, this is from 2003, it's version 8. I don't know if there's a n newer version. Um, I know that Bongo wrote a hex editor. I don't know if this is his one or not, but this is the one I've used for quite a number of years. Uh, it's it's pretty useful just for my like the the basic things that I do, and I'm actually going to use another editor for doing a relative search. But um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and open the open the file to start off with. So uh, I'm going to browse to my stuff. It's the official term for it. Uh, my translation on the Game Gear. Works in progress. Model Monogatari 3 and we're going to open it up. So here we see just a whole bunch of binary data represented in, um, in hex bytes. So, um, what we're going to do, uh, we could just go ahead and say Ushino Tama. There is a Kana search here. Uh, and if we search for that, it doesn't find anything. Uh, I, I think, I don't know for sure, but I have, uh, if I had to make an assumption, I would assume that this Kana search actually is based off of a table file. We don't have a table file loaded yet. So I don't think that's going to help us. And we can relative search, uh, but again, nothing comes up for that. And I think, if again, if I just had to make an assumption, probably this relative searching is uh, probably for searching like ASCII characters, characters that are encoded with the ASCII text encoding format. Uh, so we're basically talking like English letters, characters. Um, so I don't think that's going to help us. So what I've been using, and I can't take full credit for this, uh, I used to do this kind of thing back in the day, um, but I did watch a YouTube video recently just to refresh my memory on how to like do relative searches and it um, I actually I'd used Translohection a lot in the past um, So I already had it, you know on my computer and it was already something that I'd used previously, but um, This particular method was something that uh, That I my memory was refreshed on via a YouTube video So the full credit to that person. I have to look up the YouTube video. But I'll, I'll post it in the description so we're going to uh, open this up in here. Madam Monogata 3, so same thing, it's, they're both hex editors. Uh, but this has a cool search feature, it's called the value scan relative. So what we can do in this case is, um, let's pull up another, uh, oops, let's pull up another table file that we've already made. I've already made a table file for uh, Saint Tail. I was just working on that recently so let's bring that up so here's a table file and here is just a hiragana script stored in the normal order that you would store a hiragana script just like uh, you know a b c d e f g basically um, so this is going to have the general relationship of characters to one another that any you know typically any japanese uh, hiragana set is going to have uh, there could be exceptions but um so let's let's base this off of this for now. So we've got Ushi no Tama. So if we were going to use this encoding, it's going to be as follows. Uh, U, it would be 2F. Oops. Uh, she would be 38. No would be 45. Ta would be 3C. And Ma would be 4B. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and put our, our values in here. These are hex values, and we're just going to add it in. So this first one, it's going to consider, it's probably, I think it might just be sort of converting it to a decimal equivalent. So we've got 47. Um, next we have 38 uh, hex, 
going to add that in. So uh, 3 eighths relationship to 2f as hex values is actually nine, char nine characters uh, ahead of 47, or ahead of 2f in this case. So 45 is our next value. That's going to be 13 characters ahead of 56. Uh, four, five. Okay, 3c is the next one. And that's going to be nine characters back from the six nine and four b. Okay, so this is this is the relationship of these values to each other. So we don't know what the actual values are, but we're searching for for a set of values that have these relationships to each other. So we're going to scan, uh, and it actually this this it shows up twice, but these are the same address here, the same offset. So uh, it's this is the same thing. Um, and it's these values right here. Now these might not be it. Um, you can certainly you know do a relative search and get plenty of false positives. But this just happens to be it's like it's a long string of characters, and like I said, they I picked ones that were, had a high probability of being you know something that would actually show up <laughs> in the search. Uh, and uh, so yeah, so let's just double check this against what we see in the actual game. So here we have uh, this whole line here. Um, so in, in addition to this Ushi no Tama, um, there are some characters around it. All right, so we're gonna wanna like branch out from here and see if what we see in these values, you know, uh, matches up with what, what else we see in this line here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so this should be this U. So if we go back, this zero C is probably gonna be either this diacritical mark or this toe. Okay, then we've got two three, and that could be either the diacritical mark or the toe, and then we have two e. Now um, we have a ma in here; these two ma's. So is our other ma two e? So let's go ahead and look here. So this is ushi no ta ma. It is two e. Okay, so we can see that this looks like this is uh, this this actual text. It's not just like you know some random random data, some part of a graphic or you know some something else in the game. This looks like this is actually the, the text encoding here. So uh, so this is really great. So another really good way to check here is we've got this uh, double uh, repeated character here. Ah do do. So if we keep going back here a little bit, we'll see these. Uh, these repeated characters here, 4, 7, 6, F, 6, F. And, you know, my assumption is that uh, if 4, 7 is ah, then, you know, 6, F being ru and ru, um, it, you know, that, that seems like it's about the right number of characters apart from each other, that that's probably, ru, ru is pretty far away from ah in, like, the, the katakana script or hiragana, the Japanese syllabary. But, uh, but yeah, this looks like it, so super... Um, I would call it super good luck, but you know I did do this once already. But but it is good luck. This this was the first uh, thing that came up. So let's go ahead and make our table file. Um, what I do is I have actually let me let me stop this and I'm just gonna um, save it and and we'll keep going with the, we'll all edit the video.